Hey, algebra students, let's practice a few GED math test skills at the same time with this example. A student was asked to find the width of a rectangle with a perimeter of 13 and three quarter inches and a length of four and a half inches. In which step did the student make an error? Okay, I say we're doing a few skills at a time. Well, here they are. We've been asked to find perimeter. We've got perimeter formulas on the GED formula sheet. So we're gonna flex our formula sheet skills. Also, we have some fractions. So we are going to flex our calculator skills looking at fractions. And then the directions here say, in which step did the student make an error? Even though it's not usually starting with formulas, there are problems like this on the GED math test sometimes where you have to find a student error solving an equation. So first things first, looks like for the first step, our student wrote down a formula. Did he choose the correct formula? Well, he's been asked to find the width of a rectangle and he knows the perimeter. So he needs the perimeter of a rectangle formula. Is that what he has? If you're not sure, go take a look at the formula sheet. Here it is. This is the sheet you'll be given when you take your GED math test. You can see the second section down is the perimeter section. And there's a rectangle. And indeed, that is the formula. P equals 2L plus 2W. So nice job, mystery student. Step one looks good. Looks like you chose the correct formula. Next step is that our student should have substituted in the known values. Looks like they did substitute in some values. Let's see if they did that correctly. So a student was asked to find the width of a rectangle. They're finding the width. So when we go to substitute in, we should still see W. We do, that checks of a rectangle with a perimeter of 13 and three quarters. The perimeter is 13 and three quarters. We use the letter P to stand for perimeter. So where I once saw P, I should now see 13 and three quarters. Uh-oh, here's an issue. The problem says 13 and three quarter inches and they used a decimal. You can flip back and forth between decimals and fractions, but they've got to be equivalent. So if you're not sure, it would be important to check. Now, I know that 13 and 3 quarters is 13.75. Those are exactly the same number. They are interchangeable. They mean the same thing. And you might say, well, Kate, of course you know that. It's because you're a math teacher and you do everything faster than I do. And I say, no, it's not actually because I'm a math teacher. It's because I know about money. Guys, if you have three quarters, that means you have three quarters of a dollar. How many cents do you have? You have 75 cents, right? Three quarters is the same as 75 cents. And we can see that here. 13 and three quarters is the same as 13.75. They plugged in correctly on that number. The okay, only other number they plugged in here was L, the length. Let's see if they did that correctly. We have a length of four and a half inches. Ooh, four and a half, and they wrote 4.5. Is that the same? Well, once again, I know that five is halfway through our digit system, so 0.5 is the same as a half. But let's just say that you are like, really, Kate? All this head knowledge I'm supposed to have, I don't have it about fractions and decimals. You wouldn't even teach it to me. Fine, let's do the conversion in our calculator. So I'm gonna type U and over D into my calculator to type four and a half here. And then I want the convert fraction to decimal key. That's here in green, right under your arrows. It says F arrow arrow D right above the table button. Since it's in green, I'll hit that green second button and hit that conversion button. And that particular thing converts back and forth between fractions and decimals. I press enter and look. It is 4.5. This student was fine to plug in 4.5. And yes, that 4.5 is multiplying with two. So those parentheses look good. I like their substitution step as well. Okay, so what did they do next? Really important that you can see changes in algebra. So we can see like the left-hand side, nothing's changed. The right-hand side, the plus 2W didn't change. What's the part of this that changed? Well, they went from this to this. Looks like they tried to simplify. They did 
two times 4.5, they're telling us it's nine. Let's see if they're correct. Nine, legit. That was a good step. They simplified. They did a true thing. They traded out two times 4.5 for a simpler version, nine. It might not have been what you would have done first, but it was a legit thing to do. Now, let's look at what happened next. Again, look for change. Looks like there was a change here. They did something and there was a change here. They did something. So they did something to both sides. So it looks like they started solving. They started moving numbers around. I'm just going to copy that last line out that we know is correct. Look at what they got rid of. They got rid of a two that was multiplying with W. It's gone. You don't see it in the next step. Now, you might say, Kate, that's wrong because you taught me to work the order of operations backwards and to get rid of anything that's adding or subtracting first. And I would say, yes, it's true that I taught you that, but that's actually a wisdom principle. If you really wanted to, you could get rid of this too. But the reason I teach you guys that wisdom principle is because multiplying and dividing, they pass out. So if I wanted to get rid of that two multiplier right now, I would have to take this entire thing and divide by two. That's math that's more challenging. I don't want to do it, but it looks like that's what they did. They got rid of the two. So let's try it and see if their next equation is correct because it's a legit move. If you want to divide both sides by two, you want to divide away that two, you could do it, but you better do it to both sides. And like I said, division and multiplication, they pass out. They work on an entire side not just one number. 13.75 divided by two, that's 6.875. And then multiplication and division pass out. So you would have had to do this. See how ugly it is? This is why I don't do it this way with you guys. This is why I'm like, just work the order of operations backwards. Your life will be easier. So I get 4.5 plus, and then yes, it would cancel here. But I would have gotten 6.875 equals 4.5 plus W. Yeah, not what they got. They got this, 11.75 equals 9 plus W. You know, you might be saying to yourself, well, what went wrong here? Like, they were doing so well up to here. Take a look here. The two disappeared. And look at here. They went down two. They made the mistake of instead of dividing away two, they subtracted away two, taking a look at that plus sign but we know that subtracting away two is not going to take it away from a W. That two and that W were shoved together. They were multiplying. The opposite is not subtracting two. And so that's where this student went wrong in step four. Nice, tricky, challenging. Take it with a grain of salt how challenging this one is. Like I said before, you will have formula problems on the GED. Those formula problems may well involve fractions. You may have solving equations on the GED. Those could involve fractions and or finding a student error. But you're not likely to see all of them combined. We were doing a lot in one problem here. And finding the student error when you solve equations, that's the hardest kind of solving an equation for most students. And it doesn't always show up. It's a sometimes thing you might see on the test. So if this feels like a lot... Don't stress it too much. If you're good at solving equations on your own without looking at all the different ways a student could have done it right or wrong, just having your own methods in order to do it yourself are enough in 95% of the solving equation problems on the GED. All right, you guys, strong work. You're doing great. Happy learning.